Greetings. A neat thing has happened and is happening in Beaufort, North Carolina. It's the development of the Bonehenge Whale Center that I'm excited to tell you about. You're looking at a panoramic image I just took of the interior on this rainy Monday evening. And it's about a 33 by 56 two-story building that has a second floor balcony, lots of lights, uh, windows, and away we go. I'm Keith Rittmaster, Natural Science Curator of the North Carolina Maritime Museum. I guess it all began on a cold January day in 2004 when a live sperm whale came ashore at Cape Lookout. And by the time we, uh, that is collaborators with the North Carolina Marine Mammal Stranding Network, uh, got there, it was fresh dead. And we had the idea of building a skeleton of the bones for the North Carolina Maritime Museum, but we had no place to do it. So the concept of Bonehenge and the name Bonehenge was born out of that experience. It was about a little over eight year process to prepare the bones and put them together and install the skeleton. And during that process, 22 volunteers built a 20 foot by 40 foot pole barn. We named it Bonehenge and it was custom made very specific for building the sperm whale skeleton that's called Echo for the North Carolina Maritime Museum. Uh, this is the building. The far side, you can, there's a large uh, 10 by 10 sliding door that you can kind of see right through the building there. So that's the original Bonehenge. And there's a plaque on it that sort of describes what the building was and, and why it was on uh, the McCutcheon's property in Beaufort. And three or four years after the installation of the Sperm Wealth Maritime Museum, around a kitchen table, some of us were discussing the idea of uh, taking the idea of making a bigger and better bone henge to do more interesting and relevant work in Beaufort related to North Carolina's cetaceans, which is whales, dolphins, and porpoises. And around this kitchen table, someone posed the question, could we, should we create a facility from which to base research, exhibit fabrication, display, marine conservation, educational programming, outreach, publications, and specimen collection and maintenance that focus on North Carolina cetaceans, past and present. And the timing was pretty good, and the location was um, great. In Beaufort, we have in Carteret County, we have a lot of uh, collaborating marine science organizations. Uh, whales have a significant uh, history. It's uh, whaling went on here, and there's a lot of conservation issues that we can address through such a facility. So we all left the kitchen table very inspired. I'm gonna briefly go through this timeline, which goes through the creation of the Carolina Key Maritime Foundation land purchase, land blessing, launching a fundraiser, uh, groundbreaking up to today. Uh, if nothing else, I want people who visit this facility and who see this presentation I'm creating now to understand that there's some pretty impressive cetacean diversity off North Carolina. And in this very busy poster, busy with so many circles, I've circled all the species that we've been able to document and it's 34 species of cetaceans, whales, dolphins, and one species of porpoise. That's quite impressive. In fact, it's more than any other state in the nation. And just to orient you, you probably recognize the Southeast United States, and I have an arrow where Beaufort is. And the arrow again is at Beaufort. Cape Lookout is labeled there. And there's a little square above the 
arrow that I'm going to blow up for you at the museum's Gallant Channel property. There's that square. This is the new high-rise bridge near the bottom of the frame in the museum's Gallant Channel property, and that square was an encroaching privately owned lot uh, adjacent to the museum's property. A board of directors was developed, some bright, talented folks who make very quick decisions, and the goal was to build a Bonehenge Whale Center, and I'm standing with the five board members of the Carolina Key Maritime Foundation. Proud to be associated with them. And there was an event in Durham that some volunteers set up, which was just a blast. And uh, they called it Mazoplodyne. And it featured the skeleton of a Mazoplodon whale, a Gervais beaked whale that uh, we brought to Durham for this event at a terrific venue called the Scrap Exchange. And that sort of kicked off a fundraiser. And Bonehenge.org website and fundraiser was launched out of as of this event, November 19th, 2017. And this is just uh, some images of the event and the people who attended and some of the specimens that we brought. So that encroaching lot, that land was purchased by the Carolina Key Maritime Foundation for $33,500 in April, 2017. There was a, um, a dilapidated structure that occupied most, uh, all, even more than all of the property. And so the first challenge was to remove that. Uh, at an early meeting, uh, this guy, Vic Vasilino raised his hand and said, I would like to volunteer to be the GC of this project. Now, the property is a gallant channel the body of water that it's on is called Gallant Channel. To me, GC means Gallant Channel. I'm almost embarrassed to say I think I was the only person in the room who had no idea what he was talking about because I didn't know what GC meant, but everyone else pretty much knew it meant general contractor. Meet Vic, uh, a fun, dynamic, bright, talented friend of everybody uh, who was our volunteer general contractor for this project. And a bunch of biologists and captains and pirates and hippies and other misfits got together and had a land blessing ceremony with uh, incense and poetry and a conch shell and some other various things in April 2018. And then the following month, we had a more formal uh, groundbreaking ceremony. We're up and running. Uh, pirates welcome. Pirates very supportive. These are two of our good friends and local pirates on either side of contractor Vic Vasilino. And uh, we're off and running. So we're still in May here, the day of the groundbreak, uh, the month of the groundbreaking. And you see the foundations poured and the second tour, story floor is already uh, framed up in some of the floor walls. Uh, the trusses delivered, still May, the trusses installed. There were a few fundraisers in addition to the Mazoplodyne that kicked off uh, the fundraiser for this. Other volunteers and donors conspired to do other fundraisers. And uh, this was in July, no, in May. Uh, Beers for Bonehenge, a fundraising party at the Maritime Museum's Harborside deck. And this just shows a bunch of the supportive people uh, at that venue, at the fundraiser, in support of the Bonehenge Whale Center. Laura is cutting insulation, one of the more miserable jobs, but it's one of my favorite parts of the story because that insulation that we used came from the Beaufort Elementary School that was being torn down. It was on its way to a landfill and we got it. It saved us lots of money, uh, sourced locally, 
reused everything I love. Um, and, and so this is a very well insulated building and uh, because of the good work of Laura and many other people, uh, we were able to reuse that insulation. Uh, roofing being delivered. Exterior deck being framed. Uh, one Wednesday afternoon, I caught Vic with an extension ladder so long it should be illegal. And he was climbing that ladder with a drill in his teeth and a step ladder over his shoulder to put up this flag. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> Siding going up. This is just July, like a few months after the groundbreaking. And by August, it was dried in. And you can see the sheetrock uh, being installed there. This is a panoramic, panoramic view, August 2018, four months after the groundbreaking. Mike painting the walls. Vic varnishing the ceiling. Barbie cutting, that's probably trim for the inside. Installing the support beams. This is the beams that support the uh, second floor balcony. Vic, Alejandro, and I think his name was Tom. Mike and Vic installing the handrails along the steps. And another fundraiser uh, was conceived, the Right Whale Pale Ale Launch Event, a special beer in support of the Bonehenge Whale Center, thanks to Tight Lines Brewery in Moorhead City. And that's an inflatable right whale that our leader of the regional stranding network, Vicki Thayer, who happens to also be my wife, brought an inflatable right whale to this event. And it was just another uh, fundraiser because we, um, we needed the money to build this building. A bunch of volunteers cutting and varnishing interior trim. Karen and Nan putting exterior paint on the horse. Putting the final touches on the second floor deck. Craig built the stairs and a lot of the fine carpentry work associated with those stairs. Carrie did lots of stuff and here she's varnishing places that most people would never think needed to be varnished. Nan spent many uh, hours, days, conceiving and creating a mural of some of our local bottlenose dolphins on the floor. And that was before the floor was actually uh, cleaned and well, it was after it was cleaned and before it was stained and sealed. So you can see Nan's artwork and this is a crew that was finishing the floor. Various generous, very generous donor and friend donated a scissor lift for us to use inside the building. She named it Jonah because it's going to put us in the belly of whales. And January 2019, less than a year after our groundbreaking, we are moving in. And I had lots of whale parts, bones, tools stored in many garages and sheds and storage units. And so we went to fetch them and we are bringing them into the Bonehenge Whale Center, moving in, big crew of uh, friends, volunteers, uh, many NC State students also helped with the process. Still moving in our uh, chemical chem chest freezer, installing the mandibles, the two lower jaw bones of a right whale that was had been entangled and struck by a ship and came ashore dead in North Carolina. So there's a uh, right whale man of archway when you walk in. I was honored by the Surf Rider Foundation and folks associated with the Plastic Ocean Project. Uh, 
that designate Henge as a ocean-friendly establishment, which dictates um, specific things we do in here that reduce our impact on the environment in the ocean, such as recycling and avoiding single-use plastics and using caterers that are also ocean-friendly establishments. This is a summary of the fundraising effort for this project. We had a fundraising goal of $300,000 and at the bonehenge.org website, there were options of uh, placing your donation under a, well, if you had a lot of money and were very generous and supportive, uh, you could be under the blue whale category for $25,000. If you're cheap like me, uh, you could be a barnacle at the bottom of this chart for $25. But interestingly, the most common donation was at the $100 level, not the cheapest, but the $100 level at the Atlantic Spotted Dolphin level. Thank you all of you Atlantic Spotted Dolphins. But there's a category for all donation sizes in between as well. And I mentioned a $300,000 goal. And as of uh, several months ago, in January, beginning of this year, we had re raised $281,000 through 208 donations. And the average donation pushed up by the very generous uh, donations it was $1,335, but the uh, mode, the most common donation was $100. And uh, yeah, this, this worked. There were 68 volunteers who did things from leading fundraisers, pushing a broom, handling a hammer or a saw. And once I got up to 14,000 hours, I just stopped counting. But this has had the feel of a, um, a community barn raising. And the work that was done one month and the materials used really depended on how fundraising went the previous month. I mean, who would want to lead a project that operated like that? And uh, contractor Vic Vasilino did uh, with, with great style kindness. So uh, these are the people and the organizations they represented who actually did the volunteer work in Bonehenge or leading the fundraisers. And these people did uh, everything from painting or cutting wood, sweeping, leading fundraisers, and much more. Thank you, thank you for this talented, kind crew. Laura created this graphic uh, to help us visualize how we're doing with the fundraiser. And actually, we can raise that line a little bit because we're a little above 280,000 now. And we have uh, several assets that uh, come to this new facility. One is a boat that was donated to the Friends of the Museum that we use for uh, bottlenose dolphin and whale research and stranding response called Spy Hop. And that's a white beaked dolphin that came ashore uh, dying and it died on the Sand Dollar Island on Spy Hop there. This was a, is a, Four wheel drive new Toyota Tacoma that was donated to our work. And that comes to this new facility. Our North Carolina monofilament recovery and recycling program will be run out of here, where we put receptacles on beaches, docks, and piers to try to address the problem of discarded uh, fishing line, both nets and line. Uh, and it's a uh, devastating impact on protected marine wildlife. And we collect fishing line from these receptacles and ship them off for recycling. Oh, that graph just uh, shows the, uh, the progress of the program. We've sent off for recycling a little over uh, 3,000 miles of fishing line since the project was conceived in 2007. So thousands of miles of fishing line on the vertical axis and a uh, year on the horizontal axis. Hope that makes sense. And one of the most recent additions is a stunning mural 
nearly life size of a mom Cuvier's beaked whale and her young calf. And Nan Bowles and Constance Sartor are shown here collaborating on that artwork. Putting on some finishing touches and putting the finishing touch on the artwork. That's on the interior wall near the entrance of Bonehenge. Stunning. And there's another feature that you can't see during the day, only, and that's the glow in the dark features that Constance added with glow in the dark paint. The squid are illuminated, glow in the dark paint, and the skeleton. And that's the Bonehenge Whale Center with the new high rise bridge in the upper left and gallant channel uh, above in the background. That's a, another panoramic that I took uh, several months ago. Oh, John is adjusting a bottlenose dolphin that's on the window. Let's see. Right there where I'm painting and where I'm pointing. And there's the dolphin in the window. And we did sort of a fun, silly thing. We had painted all the bones of this dolphin with glow in the dark paint and mounted some black lights on the window frame that you can see above the dolphin's head. And there's two other ones and they're on timer. And every sunset, they come on and really illuminate this dolphin. So after dark from the street side, you can see this glow in the dark bottlenose dolphin named Shack because she came ashore on Shackleford Banks. There's a close up of her illuminated skeleton. And that's the Bonehenge Whale Center. We currently are not open for public visitation or programming. We can't be open until we have our final inspection and we can't have our final inspection until we have water and sewer utilities, which are not installed in the road yet. But I understand some very good people are laser focused on making that happen sometime this year, I hope. So I look forward to uh, opening it up and many people who uh, have viewed this will come visit, I hope.